Ultima has been in the line business for an awfully long time. We actually launched the Ultima brand about nearly 20 years ago. And the focus of Ultima has always been on quality, developing the best products that we can for each section of the market. Um, and we cater for the shore angler, the, the uh, boat angler. Uh, we're now coming in with new products as well in, in braids and so on. And uh, we, we are really the, the most specialized line company in Europe at the moment and uh, constantly innovating with new products for the future. You know, we've, we've got some of the best anglers in the world here today. I mean, this sort of test day um, is really important. We listen to these guys. They've fished all around the world for all the different species that you can imagine. Um, you know, Pete Corker, world silver medalist, George, England International, uh, Joe Arch, um, world champion. You know, they, these guys are the best in their field. I've been working with Julian Shambrook for many years, and Julian's now going to give you a bit of a background on all the anglers who are here, because uh, he knows them all intimately, and he knows their achievements and, and their, uh, their strengths, and uh, he'll give you a little bit of background on, on what a really great group that we've got here. I'm here with the Ultima Lads to take you around the North Wales Peninsula to catch some fish on lots of different venues. Whilst we're there, we're going to show you what bait to use, what rigs to use and how to tie them. We'll also show you the best knots for the job in hand. Joe Arch, Team Wales, probably one of Wales' most successful match anglers. He's pretty well travelled, Joe. He travels up and down the UK fishing matches week in, week out. He's been successful both in this country and abroad, at home level and world championships. He's been a world champion and a runner-up. The thing I love about shore fishing in the UK is the variety of species you catch, whether it's in the winter, the spring, autumn, or you know, in the summer. It's every, every season you fish for something different, and you've always got a vast variety of fish to catch. The scenery and everything, and where you are, and where we're fishing today up in North Wales on the Chilean Peninsula, you know, it's an absolutely fantastic spot. Pete Corker, what more can I say about him? He is a Pensy League winner, he's a world silver individualist and has been a team gold winner for Wales. I'd say UK shore angling, I'm very, I like the variety of species, uh, we've got a lot of species sort of off these rock marks are absolutely tremendous, um, but the clean beaches even, if you're fishing light lines, you've got mullet, you've got all the flounders and all the bits and pieces, so it's the variety of fishing I would say, it's just, it's incredible. Um, no end of miles of coastline you can explore as well, you know, it's, it's a fantastic. George Smith, England International, won home international golds, silvers, bronzes. He also, unfortunately, has seemed to be the bridesmaid in the Masters. He has been the runner-up three times. My fishing career started when I was about five years old. Um, as a young kid, fishing in rock pools for eels, flounders, finding rocks. I progressed as we moved um, onto into Dover on the Kent coast, onto the Admiralty Pier, where my match fishing come in to its own then, um, learning how to fish for mullet, how to fish for garfish, how to fish for mackerel, all the fish what are there to catch, pouting, everything. Um, if I had a last chance for pleasure fishing, it'd be Anglesey. You've got an island where you can catch anything. You put a bait on and you do not know what you're going to catch. You get anything from uh, the humble dogfish to a bullos to a ray to anything. You know, anything that swims past and you'll, you'll catch it. Um, a very good place to fish. Shane Russell, Team Wales. He has won both the Penn Final and the Penn League. And he is known as the bait man. The, the most enjoyable fishing that I think I can do is pu purely match fishing, but from a match fishing point of view, uh, dogfish, whiting, codling at range, that kind of fishing I enjoy, and I like to fish for those species in the match situation.
So then, George, basically our fishing makes about three things, isn't it? What we want to catch, where we want to fish, and how we want to fish. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're going to look at the location, first of all, and make sure where we're going, we'll be able to find and catch the fish we need. That's it. It's, it's, where you live in the country determines what you're going to catch in that area. So yeah. you pick your location where you're happy to fish with. Yeah. Sandy beach, a rocky mark, mud, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Obviously, those areas, each area, is, you're going to catch different certain types of species. So, for instance, here where we're, we're sat on a rock, we're, we're basically looking for rock species such as wrasse, dogfish, bullos, odd rays, congas, and big pollock. fish. <laughs> and the odd pollock, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the bigger fish, it's... I know rocks seem to throw up the bigger fish, but it's not, it's not only in all the areas it does that. The thing with coming to a place like this is there's no way on earth you and I, I'm from Devon, you're from the East Coast, there's nowhere on earth we could just turn up here and go fishing no. because we wouldn't know where to go. No. So no. But doing that, who, what, you, what do we need to look at? You need to be looking at, if you know someone in the area who fishes it regular, have yeah. a word with him, or the best thing to do is have a word with a local tackle shop. Yeah. He'll give you the information you need, the tides, when it fishes best, um, what state of the tides even, yeah. um, your baits, some sandhill, mackerel, Ragworms, things like that, and rock marks, that's the main base. On sandy beaches, it could be worm, it could be crab. It's have a word with a tackle dealer first, yeah. and he will put you right, and he might have the bait, what you need as well. One thing as well, I think, is really important is uh, the weather, the wind, and the tides, as we were saying about the location. So, for instance, if this had been blowing a five to six It'd south, been... southwesterly, it would have been first and foremost not safe. It wouldn't be very nice at all, no, no, you'd have had swell everywhere, the rocks have been very slippery, um, you've got, your mobile phone's no good here, yeah. you're, you're out of the way. Me personally, I think if you was coming, you have to let someone know that you are, where you're going to be and what time you're going to be back. Yeah. Um, some of these areas here, you know, you, you, no one's ever going to know unless there's two of you. Yeah. If you're on your own, I, I wouldn't even think about going on your own in these places. And, and, and venues like this, when we're looking at these rocks, they might well look, put your foot down and you could be away because it could be slippy. Doesn't That's it. look, yeah. you know, wet rock can be very slippy. It can, yeah. It's, and the weed, the weed is one of the worst things. You get green weed and it's very, very slippery. You know, in the summer it grows everywhere. And if you're fishing at low tide, you're amongst the weed as well. That's yeah. the thing. High tide is not bad. You're on rocks that have been exposed to, you know, to the weather and that lot and they're a bit more hardy. The ones that are down what, underneath the tide line yeah. are very slippery. So if we were going to go and fish some of uh, the other locations we're going to do, one of the, another way we could do is possibly look at people that belong to local clubs, yes. get involved with the local clubs. Yep. If you're, if you're looking at um, getting to know more venues in your local area, join a club. Yep. They, they usually fi they fish on one place all the time. They, they switch around. You get to get a bit of knowledge then of yep. your local area. Not only that, you get to pick the brains of the better yeah. anglers who will tell you things, uh, what baits to use, what time a year certain fish come through, your codlins, your whitings, your place, your flounders, yeah, yeah. all things like that. As a, as a local re as a retailer in your area, George, it's, in, it's important that you keep in touch with those clubs and all the anglers and all the people, you have all the best knowledge, you make sure everyone tells you where the fish are so that you can then pass on that information and that's key to you as a, as, as a retailer, not only giving information but also receiving, receiving it. it. Yeah. I, I'm actually a member of clubs in my area um, and I get to fish on the club scene and I get to fish the match scene as well. Yeah. So it's I get to know both sort of thing. It's a good thing, but you get people, pleasure anglers, who come in all the time, asking you, where can I catch some smooth owls? Where can I catch a cod? And straight away you can tell them, this is the bait you need, mate. This is where you want to be. And nine times out of ten they come back and thank you. They caught fish. Yeah. So it's, I know I've got a tackle shop. There's a lot of tackle shops in, in areas that can help you all the time. And a tackle dealer wants you to do well yeah because if you do well you'll go back again basically we're pretty lucky we've been blessed with glorious weather here and the, it's beautiful weather sunshine but we've come here on a neat tide now neat tides are small tide small tide yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's areas like this the bigger the tides here you know spring tides which are the larger tides you'll have too much tide run here you get pulled into all the snags stuff like that so yeah neat tides are better here we've got nice weather you know, you've got to Look at your weather before you go fishing. You, yeah. You've got to check it, especially where you're fishing. Anywhere in the country fishes on different weather conditions and different size tides. Yeah. So go on, go on the Ultima page, I'm on the C section, on ultimauk.com. You'll get everything you need to know from tides, weather, a whole lot. Excellent.
Okay, we got to the beach. We're about to start fishing. First of all, you need to set up your base camp. So, before you do anything, you need to have a look along the shoreline and you will see the high tide mark. And at the moment, we're fishing an ebbing tide, which is a tide from the high water down to low water, which means you can set up on and around the high water mark. To do this, first of all, you need to put either your shelter or your igloo up. Take your bucket, grab the shelter, like so, out into the wind. When you open it into the wind, the wind basically picks it up, opens it out, you take the back bar, the brace bar, now what you need to do is secure it. Now before you secure it, make sure that the back of your beach buddy or your shelter is facing into the wind. So now it's up, it's ready to go, securing it. Take your bucket, inside. And then do the same on the other side. Won't go anywhere. Right, so everything's secure. Now all we need to do is get the gear inside. Right, now I've just cast out. The next thing I need to do, which is pretty important, is put the tripod in the right place. And there's a couple of key, key points that I, I'm gonna stress. When the wind is blowing, from right to left as it is today, hence why the shelter is like this, what you need to do is make sure that the tripod is facing in the same direction. You do not want to do that. And face it upwards so that the wind catches the line and pulls the rod and the tripod over. A lot of people actually forget that. What you need to do is place the tripod like so. When we do that, the rod faces out to sea the bow, which is the, basically the slack part of the line, bends around into the wind and holds itself in place with either the grip lead or if you're fishing on a plain lead as it drifts around. Bait's in the water, shelter's up, gear's inside, lovely day. So then, George, how long have you been using F1? Probably 10 years, more. Yeah. Um, brilliant line. It doesn't let you down. It's very supple. Lays brilliant on your reels. If you're distance casting, excellent line. Stretch it. Brilliant. You know, the best anglers in the country all use it. You've got world champions, you've got England, you've got the Scottish, you've got the Welsh, you've got the Irish as well. All international anglers who use it. They use it because it's a good line. It will not let them down. I think one of the good things with this line is we can, you can also uh, tie a really good pivney with, with this line. With yeah. both, with the black and the titanium. Yeah, there's no problem with it at all. I've used this titanium actually float fishing on small um, fixable reels and found that the lighter line is excellent. Yes. But on the on the multipliers, probably the, the 12 and the 15 are one of the best casting lines. Of course it is, yeah. Um, I use the 12 and 15 pound on me fixables, close in fishing for flounder fishing that light in estuaries or... Uh, your 15s plus you know, with multipliers on yeah no problem with it at all and obviously I would presume depending on uh, the amount of fishing you do would determine how you're going to buy it it's available it in shops in all sizes of course it is yeah it is a lot to go fishing regular and use a lot of line be better off with a half kilo as you find when you're filling your reels up with the four ounce spools you always have a little bit left yeah. it's nice to buy half kilo and just have a little bit left yeah. one little bit it saves your money in the long run yeah
buying rods and reels. First of all, you've got to know what you want to go and catch, what you want to be using, the reels, the rods. First thing you do, straight into your local tackle shop. Being a tackle dealer, George, somebody walks in and says to you, right, I'm going out on the beach, I need a rod and reel kit. Help me, what should I, what should I have? The fixed ball is the easiest reel to start with. There's no forming it down, right, like you just hold it in your finger and let it go. Yeah. And it just, the line comes off the top, nice and easy. With the multiplier, you've got to adjust the brakes, adjust the bearings, and all different bits of bobs. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like a winch. Yeah. It's got to work right. Yeah. And because of the, the fixed ball and the new perfect uh, cone systems that they have now, obviously you can use lighter lines. Yeah, the, the, the new cone spools now can put that little bit more distance what you need. Yeah. So your lines, instead of bulking out all the time, you can put what you need on two or three hundred yards of line, easy. In the old days, the, you, it was always shunned upon to use a fixed ball, wasn't it? Of course it was. Never <laughs> use a fixed ball, never use a fixed ball, but I think we probably find that we've, uh, we use it at least 40, 50% of the time now. Of course you do, yeah. It's, the, the fixed balls in the old days were the main reel. Yeah. As, as we got into that... 90s, they were just shunned on then. Yeah. The multipliers were the main thing then. But now, people are turning back to them. They're more advanced now. It's, they're excellent reels now. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a standard off the ground cast using a fixed ball reel. Okay, an off the ground cast. First of all, what you need to do is have a, in your mind, have a picture of a clock. First thing, the lead. The lead we place at three o'clock. Move across. By doing this, we then point the rod tip to the center of the clock. So the line or the leader is then straight. Which means as you move, the first thing that bends is that tip. So you're going to get straight into the tip. As you get into the tip, the rod starts to bend and you push with your right arm. That then enables the rod to compress. As you come through, and stop looking straight up at the sky. Never bring the rod tip down and thrash. It's one movement, straight through, up and out. Finger onto, onto leader, turn the bell arm over, make sure the rod tip is down, hand onto bottom of butt, come slowly through the cast and forward. Simple, no effort, hardly any strain, very, very easy cast. So, ultimate distance. Well, it's pretty obvious what this has been designed for, wouldn't you say, George? It is. What it says, the name, distance. Um, it's the casting lads of taking this over. Um, it's a very good line. It gives what it says. It's a distance line for casting. Fantastic on small multipliers, little fixed balls. I think they do it from an 8 to a 30 pound. That's so. it. Yeah, it's a fishing, fishing or casting line. It lays brilliantly on reels, you know, on a multiplier and a fixed ball. It's, as, it, as it says, it's very supple, so it will bed in brilliantly. Um, I mean, I've used this a couple of times on the beach, but it's been taken over now by the casters. They, they love it. They, they swear by it. They reckon it puts an extra few yards they need. It's, that, that's what they want. And the other thing is, obviously, being a yellow line is key for when they're on the tournament field. It's now been endorsed by the UKSF. They're yep. the casting organisation in this country. Yeah, it's, it, it's not just in this country, in other countries as well. They've all taken it on board. They love the line. It says it's available in fillers all the way up to half kilo spools. So the lads who go on a field and use a bit of line, it's ideal for them. The most important thing for the tournament caster is that the line is of the right diameter. So they need a 0.25, a 0.28, a 0.31 and a 0.35 to go with their leads, which are 100 grams, 125, 150 and 175 grams. Yeah, well, so these lines are to the 
specifications of the tournament casters organizations around the world so they've got to be spot on and that is why all the organizations have endorsed these products of course it is of course it is yes So then, Shane, bait, probably the yes. most important thing about our fishing, to catch the fish. Well, it is. Without bait, you can't catch a fish. Simple as that. I mean, you can catch fish on lures, you can catch fish on plugs, things like that. But ideally, in most situations, you need bait, and you need good bait. And you need to know how to prepare and look after that bait. So the most important thing, obviously, is looking after your bait, but actually, before you even get onto the beach. Yeah, that's correct, at home, yeah. At you home. need the right setup to look after your bait and to store it correctly and also to take it to the beach. Yeah. You need the right things, especially in the summer. Buying your bait, obviously, you need to get it from the shop and then into your fridge at home. Yes, your fridge, your freezer, you know, whether you're buying frozen bait, fresh bait, it's very important to buy good quality bait and to keep it in the right condition. Yeah. All the way to being put on your hook. So once, once we've had, once we've got the bait from home, yes. we're about to leave, what do we do? Right, OK. Well, obviously, you've got the right storage facilities, hopefully, at home, i.e. fridge, freezers, that's sorted, that end. Yeah. Right, you need to carry the bait in the correct places to the, to the best way of getting it to the beach, yeah. which can involve using the flask for the sand eels, the cool packs, which obviously fit into the cool bags, yeah. and the ice blocks also go in with the cool box. Those are really, really important. They're very important. People just forget that... Just taking a cool box onto the onto the beach without any ice packs in actually has a complete opposite effect. It has effect. an opposite effect because they uh, obviously they cook from the inside out, yeah. yes. You need to bring it down using these things which are frozen. So if we were using, uh, if we're going to, say for instance, uh, freeze or take sorry, frozen uh, mackerel and sand eels with us, what would we do? Would we, would we just put them straight out of the freezer into a box or... Do we wrap them in anything? Well, that's quite interesting. The, the, the favourite for the, the sand eel, if we start with the sand eel, yeah. the favourite to transport the sand eel is the flask. Yeah. It's the wide mouth flask, steel flask, which you could quite easily get enough sand eels for a match in, i.e. four or five packs, and that is totally airtight, totally keeps the bait in tip-top condition. You could take a bait out individually as the sand eels come out individual out the flask, at each cast, you can bait up with a certainly part frozen sand eel, Perfect. which in itself is a good plus because a part frozen sand eel, when it hits the water, will pull out the juices far quicker so, as it breaks down. So what you're saying is when, when you're at home, you, you actually take the sand eels, cut the packet, take the sand eels out of the packet yes. and put them straight into the, yes. the thermos flask. that's correct, yes. And then transport the thermos flask to the beach to your fishing situation. Moving from the sand eels onto the mackerel, obviously that's a much, much bigger product. You yes, can't, more can't stick that into a thermos flask. What would you do with that? No, what you would do with that ideally is to wrap it in newspaper and transport it either in the cool box with enough ice packs to keep that cool box well loaded. Yeah. Because obviously space is a big thing. You have to fill the space with yeah. the cold ice packs yeah also this is why smaller items like that can be good for a couple of packs of mackerel where you can fill up with ice blocks so obviously the the, the newspapers are really really important to wrap those in if we then move from uh, the frozen baits over to our our, our fresh or our live yes, baits yes uh, do you or would you say that uh, newspaper is as important with ragworm and, and very much worm? so very much so it, it, it acts also as an absorbent yeah. with the bait take out any excess uh, juice. juice or liquid or whatever that is in the bait which firms the bait up keeps it in tip top condition and also again that wrapped in paper with some ice blocks obviously be careful not to directly Freeze. place yeah. the bait on the ice blocks but keep the cold environment the same and that will transport just as well probably one, one tip uh, I think that's uh, quite useful is to say but using fresh bait if you've got it in a fridge probably one of the best things you can use is a cat litter tray oh, without doubt without doubt the cat litter trays are the key to keeping bait yeah. because you can split the bait up into smaller proportions keep the bait isolated in smaller units yeah. so if the worst does happen and part of the bait goes off you haven't lost all your bait one of the and other spreading out bait does help so one of the other things is obviously you get your your, 
your bait into into newspaper. You put it in the newspaper, stick it in the fridge, leave it. That's not the thing to do. You That's must not the thing to do. you must check it We've and got changing to look after bait. Changing paper. Yes, changing paper. Temperatures of fridge are very important. That's something that I need to stress to a lot of the shops we deliver to. The temperature of bait needs to be kept at a higher temperature in the fridges in the summer than in the winter. Yeah. Because obviously you're looking at outside temperatures, which the bait is used to coming out of those temperatures. You don't need the shock factor, especially with ragworm. And what about with lugworm? Obviously there are a couple of different types of lugworm. We've actually got some uh, Welsh black lugworm yes. here. Um, for those not necessarily putting them on, to, on top of paper and leaving them, what would you actually do with those? We would roll those. We would roll yeah. those in what they call a wrap, yeah. which is a wrap of ten, rolled in three sheets of newspaper, dry newspaper, wrapped individually in a roll. Yeah. The good thing with that is once you've done that, you can actually put those straight into a fridge and you can actually yes. leave them. They and don't they're need, stored. They're, they're stored done. and done. They're done. They're done. And if you were to Easy take those bed. onto a beach and you, you use them, but you didn't use all of them, you can actually take them back home yes. and refreeze them. The beauty of black lug is there's no wastage because obviously you can freeze black lug. You can take so many for a session, use half if you don't have a particularly hectic session. The rest can go home and be frozen. And right. they could be just as good bait for dabs and whiting as a fresh bait. Right, Peter, um, we've got Red Ice here, which is Ultima's uh, biggest selling uh, main line. Yeah. Um, it comes in two colours. Um, there's fluorescent red. It's a copolymer line. And they also do what they call black ice, um, as in driving conditions in the winter. You can't see your black ice, so it's you clear. can't see this line. This basically ticks all the boxes you want uh, as a fishing line, as a main fishing line. It is very, very abrasion resistant. Yeah. It has got very, very good visibility. The knot strength in it is excellent. It is incredibly good. And as I say, with the, the visibility of it, it's a, a very good line to use in the daytime and at night. Because um, you can, when you're winding in, you can see exactly where your trace is coming from. Because all you've got to do is follow the line down into the water. Well, got, yeah. I think uh, we saw some fishing on the promenade near where we live down in Coleman Bay. I think you see a lot of families using it as well. So sort of, I think the colour goes well for the kids, to be honest with you. But you see so many of them fishing with it. Uh, yeah, but it's instantly it's, recognisable, isn't it, really? Yeah, but it's very good for kids to use because they can actually see where their line's coming from. You know what kids are like when they're fishing. Yeah, trying you? to wait for that fish yeah. to come in over the top yeah, of the wave. That's it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like when we were kids, I suppose, you sort of really know hoping something's going to come and yeah. gives you that pointer. Yeah. 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 It's uh, available in uh, Breaking Strange from 12 to £35. Pound. Yeah, so that's, um, that's from all. So it, it covers all the multitudes. So they could even snip a bit off and use it as a snood if they wanted to. If you, you wanted to, yeah. yeah. If you push come to shove, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. What sort of spool size is, is the red and black ice available in? Well, this is the black ice, which is a clear line, yeah. um, and it's available in filler sizes, which are 300 metres. They do a four-ounce uh, spool, and they also sell it in the half-kilo size spool. Ideal for the families, I think. They are, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, Shane. So then, the big thing is putting a sand eel on. Right. How do we do it? Everybody has their own way. Yes. Um, and obviously, where you fish is North Wales with lots of sand eels. Right. So yeah. tell me the best way, if I can get a sand eel out, the best way to put that sand eel on the hook. Right, okay. Okay, you take the sand eel. Now you want to take two cuts of the sand eel. Firstly, you want to take it just ahead of the gill cover and just about a quarter of the way down the sand eel. Take the tail section. That is in effect helping the juices and the scent to come out of the eel. 
you take the sand eel like so. You take the hook and then you obviously feed the eel up the hook shank, keeping the point within the eel. You never ever let it come out? No, you don't let it come out because then you start bursting the skin and bursting the eel. Then you need to secure the sand eel to the hook, especially if you're going to be casting any distance. And the best thing we find for that is elasticated cotton, a fine variety. This variety is called Gold Zack, can be bought in any fine haberdasheries. So like that though, you bind the sand eel to the hook. So you've, you've gone up and down that... And I've gone up and down once, and I will again repeat the process down to secure the sand eel Do you to tie the hook. a knot? I do not tie a knot because this fine elastic will bite into the sand eel and when you break it off it won't unravel. Right. It'll sit where it's been broken. Like thus. Perfect. As you can see there's no unravelling there and all you want to do then is pull down your bait stop to stop the bait from moving up the line when casting and there is a presented sand eel bait. And that's perfect because you can see the blood that's just coming out of the yes. bottom of the eel and yeah. that's basically straight where the fish is going that, to go that's for. That's the attractant. That's the attractant. All fish feed on scent and that is an attractant, all bottom feeding fish. And a good point there as well is you've got a sequin on there and that basically holds the, the sand eel in place. Yes. So that if, if it does slip a little bit, you've got that there just holding the it sequin, up against the spot. The sequin knot. will hold it and keep it to the hook point where obviously the action end of the, the hook. Perfect. Where you need the hook to be, and that or would, the fish to be taking the hook. And that would be your key dogfish bait, wouldn't That's it? That's a key dogfish bait without and any skate. doubt. And in larger varieties, yeah. the same principle, a skate bait. Yeah. The, and a bullhouse bait. Sand eels actually come in uh, in different sizes. They come in different sizes. They come in four or five different sizes. They come in small, medium, large, extra large, and what they call jumbo. And uh, there's and also something that oh, a launch, yeah. There's a launch, yeah. And that's a, what they call a greater sand eel. That's a greater sand eel, which is very effective fished in large chunks for bigger species. Perfect. Again, the same principle used in the elasticated cotton to secure the launch to the hook. Brilliant. OK, Shane, so we've got some beautiful ragworm here. Yes. Yeah, these are, these nice. are called king rag, aren't they're they? They're king rag, yes. They're the king rag. Yes. So, putting these on a hook, there's a number of ways, but probably the easiest way, thread just, it straight on the hook. thread it straight on the hook. Would you like me to do that? Oh, just, I would do. Just take the ragworm accordingly, take the hook point and the ragworm. Again, pass the hook point through the head of the ragworm, feed the ragworm up the hook point, like so, keeping the hook in the worm at all times depending on what size of bait you require nip the bait accordingly there is the finished article there's a lot of juice that come out of that wouldn't there? yes there is there's a lot of scent a lot of juice and it's very attractive to a whole host of species again we will pull down the bait stop which will stop the bait from moving up the line when casting and that couldn't be a finer bait all ready to go to the seabed OK, so we've baited up the bottom hook with uh, the king ragworm. Yes. And now we're going to use the lugworm. But this is a different type of lugworm to the common lugworm. Yes. This is a black lug. This is the Welsh black lug, yes, which is a large variety of lugworm, which you gut as you dig and is preserved by rolling in newspaper and can last any time up to 10 days in that state. The difference between, obviously, <coughs> the ragworms, which we can see here, which are all thriving around yes. in the... On the paper, yeah. this one is basically laying flat, and that's because it's been been gutted. gutted yeah. Yes, yes, okay. which is the general rule of thumb. So, if we were going to bait this up, how would we do that, Shane? Well, ideally, you would throw the worm onto a hard surface, which in effect contracts the worm beautifully to be put on the bait, to be put on the hook rather, and that now is ready to go on the hook. Perfect. It can go in a variety of sizes. The most common size, though is around about three and a half, four inch size. Again, passing the hook through the worm 
keeping it inside the worm as you pass it up the hook shank. That is one of the best baits for cod. That is the premium cod bait. And that will catch more species in winter than literally any other bait. That is the most fish with bait in winter, and it obviously it catches the most fish for that reason. But it is mostly used in the winter time for cod, whiting, dabs, any number of species I mean, that are looking for that. The good thing with that is, um, if you have got a packet of, of black lug and you've been fishing during the daytime, if you come back and they're all in perfect condition yes. and they were live in the beginning, yeah, you can then roll they can them. Be, they can be rolled in newspaper and they can be used for dabs and whiting, smaller species in a frozen variety, just as good as the fresh variety. And they'll catch plenty of small species. Okay. So then, Shane, we've got a couple of mackerel here. This is probably yes. the, the most popular bait. I would say our, it is. Yes. On our, yes. In our fishing. So to prepare a mackerel, obviously, first of all, we need to. Open the pack. Open the pack. And these have just come out of the cool box and yes, they're still nice and nice and uh, firm. We'll take that one away. So we've got the mackerel out. We'll discard that one. Yes. Next thing. To prepare this bait, we basically need a fillet in. You so, need a fillet in knife, yes. So there's a fillet in knife. There we are. Away we go. I would ideally fishing for medium-sized species use a chunk of say so big. Ideally, from the back of the fish, if uh, it's a fresh fish. The one thing there as well, which is absolutely key cut for away safety from reasons, is cut away. Cut away from yourself at all times for safety reasons. Take a small fillet off the flank there. Then you've got something there that can be used as a single bait. Or if you're fishing for smaller species, you can use that as two baits. Ideally, using a sharp pair of scissors to cut the piece of mackerel down the middle. The thing with mackerel is it can be, as you, as you were just saying, it can actually be used as a main bait and as a tipping it's bait. It's so it? versatile. Mackerel has got to be the most versatile bait that we use. And there you can have two baits, which are good size baits for use for a whole number of species. And we'll now go on to baiting up the mackerel. OK, so we're going to put a slightly bigger bait on the yes. bottom hook. Are we going to go for a piece like that? A piece uh, like so. I would start by passing the hook through the top of the piece of mackerel. Then I would knit it on in this fashion, in and out three times of the piece of mackerel. So you've got the hook in effect sitting right in the bottom of the chunk where the fish is likely to take it. And is it important to make sure that the flesh is always this side of the hook rather than the other side? Because that's yes, where the fish are going to yes, go. Yes, because that's where the fish are going to go. That's the softest part of the bait, nearest to the hook point, with more chance of hooking the fish. I really think it's necessary to whip mackerel if you're casting at any range. And I will thus whip using the cotton the same as we used for the sand eel, slightly folding the flank of mackerel back on itself so you've got the fleshy part exposed that, that actually secures it in place and it also that secures it in brings place, all the flesh out as well brings all the it? flesh out which is most important which is the flaky part that the fish will be looking for when the bait's sitting on the seabed because that's where all the goodness is in it's not in the skin it's in the flesh and that's, that's a, what the fish will be looking for that's a very oily fish as well that's isn't a it? very oily fish indeed it doesn't have to be 100% presentable because, after all, fish are forever feeding on scent. And with the same principle as the sand eel, pull down the bait stop, which stops it flying up the hook. Keep the hook point well exposed. And there you have a perfect mackerel bait for any species, from dogfish through to ray... Huss, spear dog. And that oh, is a perfect size for those species. Perfect. And there you have the two baits on the rig ready to go out. So 
Sunshine. Ultima Power Braid. Ultima, obviously everybody knows them as a line right. company, a modern filament company, but now they've decided to take the bull by the horns and have decided to bring in a braid. Right. They're changing with the times. You and I use braid, as you yes. know, we do slightly different yes. things. I do a little bit of bass fishing. And, and I, I've done some quite deep water fishing in Norway with the uh, heavier braids. And what did you catch out there? Well, we were looking for halibut, cod in fast running tides, so we needed a braid that was not going to be too resistant to the tide and pick so, up the tide because we were lure fishing with... So the most important thing lures. there was, was actually the diameters. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. We needed to get the diameters right and to cut down on, obviously, the uh, drag on the uh, lures and get them to the bottom quicker. So the key thing with the braid, really, is that you can get a thinner diameter at a higher poundage. Exactly, exactly. Especially when you're fishing for large fish, which yeah. you obviously need that shock factor taken yeah. into consideration. Well, the good thing with it, with uh, the power braid, is being available in from a six pound to a hundred pounds. Now, ideal, ideal. ideal across the whole spectrum, ideal, yes. So that can be for the lure. We can you can go lure fishing with yeah. the lighter braids, and you can go lure fish if you're doing heavy lure fishing with a, That's right, a fifty with the, to a twenty. Yes, because it's such a with the heavy heavier uh, lures, as you yeah. say. Yes, and on the boats, obviously, boat fishing. They've been using braid for years, but it's well, coming into shore fishing. They have, now, yeah, and shore fishing is becoming a lot more. Uh, geared towards the braids obviously with the lure fishing side and also fishing on the rocks and places like that yeah. where you need to keep in contact with the lure uh, also spinning that kind of thing as a as a as an angler yourself you've you've, you've traveled and fished all over the all over the world yeah. uh, fishing for whales so um you fish in a few countries where you've had to use use braid before because you need to cast that little bit further with lighter leads yes there's been that aspect to it as well where you wanted to cast a long way with a two ounce lead to keep movement on the rig which it obviously gives you because you're in contact with yeah. the rig through the braid Obviously, there's no stretch in braid like mono. But the big difference is this is direct contact. Yes. So it's immediate action. Exactly, such. yes. Immediate action. Immediate to the fish as well. Small fish register much better on the rod tip with braid. Yeah. Whereas you wouldn't know, possibly fishing for small bream, that you've actually picked up a fish, or two fish even at stages, with the monofilament yeah. when you're fishing at distance. With the braid, it picks up every little touch. It's every touch. You yes. can see everything. Yeah, that's right. It's Fantastic. transmitted to the rod tip straight away. So this is really a... A good move for Ultima, isn't it? It's a very good move. Yeah. It's a very good move. And in today's market, it's definitely needed. It's changing times. That's right. Ultima That's changing right. the times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the Ultima Power Braid was initially available in the red and the grey, but they decided to bring in three new colours, which is the yellow, blue and the green. OK. Nothing like putting the product to the test. New Power Braid and the new fluorocarbon leader. So then, Joe, the knot. Regardless of how good the line is, the knot has to be perfect. If you've got a leader knot that's a poor leader knot with a link on the end of it, and there's a lead flying about, off the lead comes, people are in trouble. Really could well be, yeah. If you haven't tied the correct line to the hook and the knot is not secure or hasn't been tied correctly, loss of fish. It's got to be the correct knot and it's got to be tied correctly as well. Um, tying mono, one of the key things, would you say, is wetting it? You must moisten the knot and always tuck it down nice and tidy when you're pulling it tight. And, and make sure it is pulled really, really tight as well because you don't want any mishaps. And the reason we tell people that they must wet the knot is because when it's tightening down, what it, happens with that? You get heat friction yeah. and it, uh, it can burn the line. Yeah. It which, can burn the line. Which then causes a problem with the line. It weakens it. weakens it, yeah. Yeah, it weakens it and then you, know, then you could have a mishap. But as long as they know the right knot, they could basically tie three or four knots and they could go away fishing for the day. You could tie one or two knots really if you wanted to yeah. and that would be enough for your days fishing you know or your lifetime fishing really. So basically what it boils down to is tying the right knot for the right job. Certainly.
So the Ultima Sea Strike, this has been on the market nearly 15 years, I right, think. I mean, right. you and I have used this, what, probably the yeah, last... Yeah, we started out on that kind of uh, line, that's 15 years ago at least, yeah. At least. Um, I mean, some of the venues that we fish, we need to be able to use different types of lines. And when, when, we, when we started, we, we were using the 12, 15 pounds. Yes. But even now, when you fish off a lot of rock marks where you're losing gear, you've still got all the properties yeah. of the Ultima product, but at a cheap price. Because obviously, at the end of the day, r rough ground fishing, you'll be changing your line or yeah. you know, throwing it away because half of it is uh, you know, being scoured by the rocks and what have you. So it's at the right price point for so that you, kind of thing to be done. And this can be, and this could basically be sold all round the coast. It doesn't really matter where you are. If no, you're fishing on the beaches, on the not rocks, estuaries, yeah. etc. Yeah. It's an entry level product. Yeah. So when you start your fishing, you try a little bit of everything. Try a little correct. bit of beach yeah. fishing, a bit of rock fishing. Yes, a bit of estuary fishing on the piers. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Mackerel bashing. Bit of that. Yeah. Boat fishing. And it covers all. Covers all grounds. All ground. It is actually available, obviously in the two colours, but. Poundage wise, because it's available up to a hundred pounds, you From can do twelve right through to a hundred. Yeah, yeah, covers everything. Covers everything. Covers everything. Right, the knot I'm going to show you how to tie now is a single grinner knot. Uh, this knot is a very useful knot for tying. Um, a hook to a hook snood or a you know a hook length um, the reason being is when the knot is finished the tag end doesn't point out the side of the knot it points back up the knot uh, back up the line um, and you can leave it slightly longer than a, an eighth of an inch which i've you know demonstrated on other knots you can leave it about a half an inch long and this helps when the worm is threaded over the hook to help it stop sliding back down and masking the hook now this knot is another simple knot to tie you get your, your line, which I'm using 30 pound Memorex red. Um, I'm tying this to a 1 0 Camasan hook. Um, what you do, you get your line, you go through the eye of the hook, and you pull about four or five inches through, and then you wrap it around the line one, two, three, four times, and then you lay it back over the, two, the loop that you've put through the eye of the hook, and then you come back through four times, one, two, three, four. Again, you moisten it. And then you pull the tag end to form the knot. And then you slide it back down to the hook. When it's quite close, with a hook, always grab the hook with a pair of pliers. And then you pull it down tight to the hook. And you pull it very tight, and this is a knot formed. And as you can see, the tag end is pointing back up the line. Just get a snip now, and snip off, and leave it about half an inch. And this is the tag that I was talking about, and that helps you uh, helps the bait to stop sliding back down and masking the hook, which is important when you're, you're fishing, because you want the hook point always showing out, out of your bait. And that for me there is the perfect knot for tying on a hook. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how to tie um, a single tuck blood knot. Um, this knot is used for attaching a link which is attached to a lead weight, or you could use this um, knot to tie a swivel to the top of a trace which you attach to a shock leader. Um, what I'm using here, I've got some 60 pound shock leader and I've got a, a link, a lead link clip, um, which is attached to the lead. Um, all you do, you thread the, the line through the eye of the, the lead link, you wrap it round four times, and then the, the loop that you formed on your lead link, you get the tag end, and you tuck it through there, and then you just tuck it down slightly and one of the most important things you can do when you're tying a knot you must moisten it and uh, every person who normally ties a knot like this always uses a saliva so you moisten it down like that you can tuck it down a little bit and then you gently pull it and the knot will slide up and form and you give it a good tight pull you can trim the tag end off even about eighth of an inch that is a finished knot. Um, this is a very, very reliable and strong knot, and it's.
basically one of the simplest knots you need and it'll do the job very well. Okay, so power steel, this is a new line from Ultima. Um, probably like everybody else, we've all been on uh, F1 for the, probably the last 10 years. Yeah, that's and right. And how on earth were they going to actually better the F1 or bring another product into the range that was going to beat it? Well, power steel is definitely the strongest line I've used. Yeah, it's the, the bee's knees, isn't it? It's also notch strength's fantastic. Um, cast brilliantly well. Again, beds well fantastically on your multipliers. You well, tried it on fixed ball. Fixed ball well, work, yeah. That's for me. In the lighter diameters, this stuff just won't get anything better. I don't think. The thing with this line is obviously in the lower diameters, it still has that that the, the poundage there, so you can so you can actually use a lighter line where you where you normally wouldn't have done so, but you can do with this product. Yeah, yeah, and I think with it being uh, a white line, a light line as opposed to a dark line, in the, the hot sunshine definitely stands up better. So I think a light line stands up better than a bright sunshine. So do you feel, I mean, you've, you've fished abroad quite a lot, Peter. Yeah, do you, that's do right. you find that uh, that uh, the the clearer lines, or especially something like this, is going to work a lot better than, than say, uh, a red or a yellow line? Yeah, they, yeah, it could be massive, I think. Absolutely massive. Um, you know, you sort of advise anybody, if they're on a nice sand beach, have a little go, have a little go with the lower diameters as well, and just start, you know, it's just like, you're going to enjoy your fishing so much yeah. more. You're casting miles further because your diameter's right down. You're not strength there, so you haven't got any worries about getting the fish in. No, go for it, give it a go. If you are using the lighter the lighter lines, use a, a tapered shot leader with something like that Yeah, as well. very, very much so, yeah. yeah. Um, just get your tapered leader to suit the line that you're using. Fantastic. Um, and obviously just to suit the lead you used as well. You don't, the beauty of it is you don't need to use such a heavy lead. If you're fishing in weedy conditions, that plain lead will just slide through the weed, whereas your big grip lead pulls in half the beach. Yeah. So the, the poundage that these are available in is from £4 to... 30 I believe, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's, there's literally something there for everybody. You know, so it's not just for the fixed spools, it's for the multipliers as well. Uh, so people you use uh, the lighter lines on the fixed spools, possibly do a bit of float fishing that's as it, well. Yeah. And also can use it for the heavier lines for their for their slightly heavier beach fishing yeah. or a bit of the... <laughs> a lot like, like this, this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, yeah something there for everybody. The knot I'm going to show you to tie now is a stop knot. Um, what you use a stop knot for, um, the, the, one of the main reasons is, is to uh, trap a sequin above a hook um, to act as a stop for your bait not to be slid up the line um, to keep the bait basically by the hook. First thing you do need to do, you need to take a piece of nylon about six to eight inches, snip it off like that, and then you need to, between the two hands, try and hold the line um, reasonably tight. Um, you get the red uh, memorex and you lay it parallel with the the white memorex and you wrap it round three four times and then the longer the end of the tag you lay back on top of the other two and then the longer tag which you laid back around you tuck back through four times one two three four Gently pull the knot. This knot now must be moistened. And then you get the two tag ends of the red Memorex and you pull tight. And there you have a stop knot tied. What you need to do now, you need to trim both ends. Again, leaving just a, a slight little tag. And there you have your completed stop knot. This knot doesn't damage the line that you tied it on and can be easily slid up and down the line. This is a very useful knot to know, especially for on your hook lens to stop the, the baits being pushed up the line when you're casting out.
Right, I'm going to demonstrate now um, a knot which is used to tie uh, a braided mainline um, to a nylon needle. Um, this is if, an important knot if you're using braided line um, because you always need like a mono leader um, you know, to cast or to attach a plug if you're lure fishing or plug fishing. Um, the knot I'm going to demonstrate is a double grinner knot. Uh, firstly, now I've got some um, red Memorex, a 25 pound line, which is the leader, and I've got the braided main line. The first thing to do, we'll tie the braided knot first onto the, the red Memorex. You get the braided line and you lay it on top of your nylon line and you wrap it round four times. One, two, three, four. And you get the tag end again, you lay on top of the, the braided line and the nylon leader line. You don't tuck it through the hole or nothing, you just lay it on top. And this, the loop you've formed with the braid, you tuck the tag end of the braid back through four times. One, two, three, and four. And you pull that and form the knot. Now turn the knot around and then you repeat the same knot with the Memorex going around the braid. One, two, three, four. And again, the tag end of the nylon line, you lay next to the knot, like so. And then the tag of the nylon line, you go back through this loop that you created four times. One, two, three, four. And then you pull the Memorex not around the braided line. And it's important when you're tying this knot on a braid that you tuck the knot down quite tight before sliding the two knots together. Now what I've formed here is a grinner knot around the braided line and a braided grinner knot around the Memorex line. Now what you need to do now is to pull the two knots together and what they do, they slide up to each other and this forms a double grinner knot, which is an extremely tight knot and a very, very strong knot. Which is a perfect knot for tying a braided line to a nylon leader. What up, Pete? That's a little different. Got it nice. So we got there then. You got a ballon on the bottom on a bit of crab. Yeah, and a female cuckoo on the top. And a female cuckoo. Interesting using uh, two at rig. But I see you still got a rotten bottom on there. You didn't manage to lose that then. No. The difference between the ballon and the cuckoo, obviously the mouths are shaped slightly differently. Yeah, much deeper fish, isn't it? The ballon as opposed to the cuckoo is a really are quite a shallow rash. Yeah. Much longer mouth on the on the cuckoo with with slight, slightly narrower, sharper teeth on the cuckoo, as opposed to the ballon, they really are a thick old set of teeth on that. Yeah, yeah, it's like a rounded, like More a grouper, rounded, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very much so, yeah, you can see the, how the lips and the teeth, they're grinding. Off these limpets and... That's it, limpets, barnacles, all kinds of bits and pieces off the rock. Um, very tough little fish. Yeah, they can manage to just tear those limpets off, can't yeah, they? Yeah, they're, they're very, very strong mouths. The George Powerflex. Well, I think you and I have probably been using this for at least 15 years, I would say. And Powerflex, just by the name, powerful product, flexible. Very that's good. exactly what you need from a shot leader, isn't it? Of course it is. Because not only as a shot leader, you can use it for making your rigs as well. It's a very supple line. It's a good line. It does a good knot. Um, so if you do your leader knot, you get a very small knot. Casting uh, organisations around the world like this line so yeah. it's it, it beds down well doesn't it when you're not in it yes it does very good either onto a swivel or onto a link that's it on in the, onto your leader as well yeah one, yeah one of the key things as well um you and i both use crimps 
on our on our heavier rigs. It's very good when you're crimping down, and it, if it, if you do need to slightly move the crimp on the uh, on the rig body, it never ever scores, does it? Not on a soft line. It, 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 it's very good on a soft line. It's excellent, yeah. Um, with the casting, um, probably why they had to have it in uh, in yellow. This is a this is this has uh, been endorsed by the UKSF. Yes. Uh, a lot of the other casting org organisations around the world. Uh, they need to have a line that is that they can see on the field. Nine Ooh. times out, nine times out of ten, they're they're casting over ploughed fields, and it's very very difficult to see any other line. So, key with this. Do you ever use this at night when you're fishing? Well, that's it. See, the lads at night, I I like a clear line. But say there's a lot of people who like the orange line as well, so I can see when the gear's coming in. It's uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a range. You've got a range of lines as well from a bangle, uh, 50 meter spools up to a four, you know four ounce ball so it is it's target at everyone we've been using this a long time so uh, 17 80 pounds we use as rig body uh, 60 pounds uh, shock leaders but also making lighter uh, rig bodies out of the 40 pound as well yes very good it's very like you say it's a supple line it does does do it on you know, you can make your flounder rigs out of it as well yeah excellent one thing that is absolutely key with a shock leader no different to any other shot leader on the market is you have to look at the lead that you're using so if you're using a five ounce lead you cannot use anything under a 50 pound shot leader that's right if you if you work to the 10 to 1 you won't go wrong with all two of those you've got 60 pound there it will break 60, 60 plus pounds. yeah it's 60 pound you've got to do the 10 to 1 and um, this will not let you down Okay, this is a two hook flapper, probably one of the most common rigs used on the beach today. Um, it's got a multitude of uses, right for fishing for your whiting and your coddling, um, out on the rocks, clean beaches, it can do it all pretty much, and it couldn't be much simpler. We're on a lead link, which then goes to a swivel. Going on up, we've got a crimp, bead, small swivel, bead and crimp. A little bit of play between the two to allow that swivel to move. Carrying on up, we've got exactly the same again at the top, where you've got your crimp, bead, bead, and your crimp at the top there. Again, swivel in the middle with a little bit of movement. The actual body of the rig, which is the bit that sort of holds it all together, wants to be a similar diameter to your shock leader. Um, if you're using a 50-pound shock leader, for instance, you want to really be using a 50-pound body. Uh, the reason for that is any sort of pressure put on your line by the cast and the weight is, is going to be plenty strong enough and it's not going to snap during the cast. It's a common problem that a lot of the anglers, particularly starting off, tend to make. The nice thing about the rig as well is without it being, being clipped down, um, it's very, very simple to, to use, very, very simple to make. Um, particularly for your white, and maybe base up with a couple of pieces of mackerel there and, and pop it out. This is a pedal rig. Uh, used throughout the country, beaches, piers. Excellent rig. It, most one of the most used rig everywhere. I like this rig for fishing long range, fishing for cod, whitings, bass. This one is it clipped down to an impact lead. As it states, it's an, on hitting the water, it, the impact pushes the clip off and pushes your hook off every time. No problem. On this rig we've got a spring. What this does, when your rig comes under pressure, as you can see, the spring takes all the stretch out of your snood. On normal because you don't use a spring, after 10, 15 casts, you find out your snood stretched and it won't clip down correctly for streamlined casting. So the spring takes the whole lot out for you. Very good. On the component side, you have a large swivel, 
preferably 80 pound plus for your casting. As you come down, you have a, a smaller swivel, probably 50 pound, 60 pound swivel with a small bead onto a spring. Then you have a crimp all the way down to a clip, which clips onto your lead. On your snood, you tie your snood in, then you have your, your two hooks. I like to use a bit of tubing to hold my top hook and my pen on. It, it works well. Some people just like to wrap line round, but to me it doesn't mark your line, so it works well. Now then, Pete, we've got Powerflex tapered leaders. That's it. Brilliant leaders. Same as the Powerflex leaders, but this is in a tapered form where you get um, five leaders on a pack. Yeah, it's, um, it's well, as, as you know yourself, it goes from a very small diameter, which is often similar to your main line. Yes. And then when you, you, you sort of reel the whole leader on, um, it gradually tapers out into your shock leader. Right, yeah. So, of course, you know, you sort of got that tiny little knot at the beginning, where yes. your diameters are exactly the same, and then tapers out to your, to your leader, and sort of, it does prevent weed build-up, improves your casting hugely. Of course I like to say, on, on clean beaches, I don't think there'd be, be any reason not to use these. Especially when you've got weed, things like that on the beach, where you can get your gear, you can actually get your fish on the beach quicker, and your leader's on your reel. Yeah, weed particularly, if you've got every bit of weed, particularly in shores, when you see these lads reeling in, they've got a great big lump of weed on the leader knot, and then they've got to handball the rest of the rig up, yes. which is often, you know, what, 10 metres of yeah. shock leader trying to pull up. This, of course, goes straight through the end ring and up onto the reel, and you get your fish straight in. Of course, say, we've been using this around the world as well as ours, haven't we? So it's, it's a oh, good yeah. line, it's a very good line. Um, you get five leaders on a spool. Yeah, which is fantastic, it isn't is. it? You, know, you, t you can take one, and even in the worst conditions, you know, you you're still going to have them left coming home. Of course, and come in a, a range of sizes and yeah. colours. Yeah, they do, you know, sort of 8 to 20, 12 to 30, 15 to 50, 15 to 60, and 18 to 70. Um, in crystal, fluoro yellow, sunset gold. You know, Perfect. something there for everybody. The beauty of the, 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 the nice bright ones as well, in the heavier diameters as well. Easy to see, you know, in the dark. If you're fishing at night time, you've got a little lead lamp on. You're using that orange leader. You can see it coming in as, it, as you're reading it. In. Yeah, I do. So, like you say, an easy knot to tie, even for the average angler. It's, it's just uh, a nice knot, just two half bloods it's, it's, it. it's, it's a shame one you're tying you up with isn't it yep. and you're just doubling it up and they're not small you haven't got any fancy shock leader knots to tie it's not. just simple it's, you know, for me it's, it is that's, that's something I use all the time without question brilliant The rig I'm going to show you is a, a pulley panel rig. Um, this, this rig is um, designed to fish over a, a ground where you've got rocks and weed where you need to keep your lead up off the bottom when you're retrieving a fish. Um, the rig is constructed um, at a 60 pound Powerflex backbone which is attached to a lead clipped uh, bait clip um, and on the trace above it then you put a bead, a swivel, another bead and a swivel on the other end which is the attachment for your hook snud. Now the swivel in the middle which slides up and down is how the pulley is formed and this one gets attached to your shock leader. 
as such. The easiest way to tie this is to slide a hook up the line and to tie a hook on the end. And when you put your bait on, what you do, you wrap the line several times around the shank of the hook and you nick it into the top of the bait. And when you've got your bait loaded, you hold it and you attach it to your bait clip on your lead. And now the trace is ready for casting. And when you've cast it out, the hooks come off the bait clip. And if you're lucky enough to catch a fish when you cast out, when you, when you retrieve the trace, what happens is the weight of the fish slides the lead up to the end of the shock leader. So when you're winding in, the lead is held above the bottom when you're dragging the fish in. So there it is, that's the pulley panel clip down rig, which is a tremendous rig for fishing over semi rough ground. This is the rotten bottom rig. This rig is essential to use over rough ground um, when you're trying to get your fish back. Um, I can't ex express how important it is to use a system where you can get rid of your lead. Because if you do manage to hook up a fish on your hook and you can't get your lead back, it's an absolute nightmare because at the end of the day, your main line snaps and the fish is stuck on the bottom and it can't swim away or whatever. Um, and it, it is so important to use one of these traces when fishing over rough ground. The rig works like this. You've got a lead weight with a, a light piece of line attached. This line is six pound. How the rig works is the clip is pushed through the eye of the lead, as so, and it is folded back up the main line of the, the trace. And there is a tin hat on the line, which slips over the clip holding the clip in place. Now this is ready for casting out. This tin hat will not come off when you cast in, but what happens is when it hits the water, water pressure pushes it up and out comes the clip, releasing the rotten bottom system. Now what happens, the lead weight sinks to the bottom, it'll get caught up, and when you retrieve, after you've had a bite hopefully and you've got a fish on the hook, you pull the line and the rotten bottom snaps and breaks away. And what you're left with then is just the clip to wind back in with your fish on the hook. The hook stud is attached to the backbone of the trace via a trap, uh, trap swivel system, which consists of a crimp, a bead, a swivel, which the hook stud is attached to, another bead above it, and then another crimp. And it is important that your hook line is not longer than the backbone of your trace. Because if you don't catch a fish, your hook is above the rotten bottom system when you're winding in. So your hook can't get caught, caught up uh, in any weed or any rocks when you retreat. And that is the rotten bottom rig, and it is an essential rig to use when you're fishing over rough ground. This um, pure power fluorocarbon looks the bee's knees, not like something we've seen before, I don't think. No, it's, um, it's an incredibly good uh, fluorocarbon, this one. Um, as it says on the label, super soft. Um, compared to other fluorocarbons in the past, this is very, very soft. Yeah. Um, in the past, they were almost, almost rigid. Um, this is so supple. Um, the knot in um, of this line, um, a lot of fluorocarbons, when you used to tie the knot, it always used to leave a little slight crease above oh, the yeah. knot. But this, it's, it's perfectly straight. It's like you haven't even tied a knot in the line. Um, with the fluorocarbon, uh, the beauties of this, it's, it is invisible in water. Um, That's right. The fish can't see it. Um, and you know from the past experience we've had abroad fishing that, um, you know, when you're fishing in the clear crystal seas for, you know, garfish and, and the surface feeding fish that you catch, you've got to use fluorocarbon or you, or you don't even get a bite. No, you know, you don't, and I think the beauty of it as well is the diameter it comes in. Right yep, from 6 to 80 yep, pounds. Yep. We've got stuff for our hook lengths, got stuff for the rig bodies. Yep. You're going to have some fantastic rigs with it. No pigtailing. Yep. I think they're going to be absolutely awesome. Yep. Probably, probably, take, probably take the match fishing world by storm, I think, this stuff. 
They will for definite, and you know, for fishing the uh, the south coast beaches, especially when you're fishing for the garfish. So I take it this is going to be going with you on the plane to South Africa this year in the World Championships, and Joe. Uh, without a shadow of a doubt, um, well, especially in the uh, larger breaking strains because we won't need anything very light out there by the sounds of it. But um, it's, it'd be the first thing I'm going to pack in my box. <laughs> yeah, I can well believe it, mate. Yeah, well believe yeah, it. But very, very, very good, this stuff. Excellent. Fantastic. Right, Joe, uh, what are we going to be doing here, mate? Well, um, I'm going to be changing uh, the line on one of my reels here. Um, and what I'm going to use to take the line off the reel today is a line stripper. With this line stripper as well, um, there's an arrow on the top and it tells you which way the line is going to go. So I've got to enter the, the line in there, okay. you can press the button, and it, you can see now it's pulling the line off already. Gotcha. So if you can guide that into the bag, and I'll show you will. And I will start stripping it. It's important it when you're stripping the line, because cool. the reel's in free spool, and yeah. you could get an over undo in this. Um, so I'll just I'll keep my finger there, just in case I am going to get an over undo. Just a bit of tension on it. Yeah, so here we go. Okay. There we are. Nearly had an over undo straight you away did, there. Aye. But you can see how quickly the, the line strip is taking the line off the reel, yeah. Fantastic, isn't it? And it won't be long now before I'll be coming down to the, the back in line. And there, the, the click, heard them. you heard the click then? I did, I. Yeah, right, so what I'll do now, I'll put that down. Watch that line at the back there then, Joe. This is the backing line. This is the line that I first put on the reel um, when I first purchased the reel. Um, and that line, basically, it never, ever comes off. One thing that is important is when you purchase a reel, whatever line you decide you're going to use on that reel, mm -hmm. generally I use 0.32 or 0.35 diameter line on these, which is like 12 or 15 pound. Um, you need the backing to be of a similar diameter line. And what I'm using on this reel today is a 15 pound power steel. And the knot I'm gonna to use today is a double grinner knot. Now what Peter's doing, he's gonna keep a little bit of tension on there. So when I'm winding it on, it's, it's quite easy for me to keep control of the line going on. Now I'm guiding the line on with my finger and thumb, and I'm moving it back and forth across the spool. And Peter is keeping the tension on the spool and when I'm loading the line on the reel, it, it's not putting loose line on the reel. So now I'm getting very close to the top of the spool now. Um, and as you can see, I'm still moving the line across the reel. And basically the line is very, very close now to the, that chamfer that, which I was talking about before. And there it is. The line is right up to the top of the spool now. And as you can see, I'm at the bottom of that chamfer. So now the reel is correctly loaded, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a shock leader to the line. Okay. So why are you going to put the shock leader onto that then, Joe? Uh, well, the reason for the shock leader on the end of the line, I'll just quickly cut this now. Because uh, the line is um, 0.33 diameter and it's only 15 pound, yep. um, I will be casting 5 and 6 ounce uh, lead weights. Um, and obviously this line wouldn't be strong enough to take that. Um, so the idea of the shock leader is um, to you attach the shock leader to the, the lead weight or the trace that you're going to cast. Right. And the, it needs to be long enough to go through the rod rings back to the reel and at least four turns on the reel. Got you. Um, and, this, and what product is it then, Joe? This is, this is 60 pound orange power flex. Right. It's a high vis shock leader, which is easy to see when you're winding it back in. So all I do now, is I just wind this back onto the reel, like so. And that there is a correctly loaded multiplier with a, the correct shock leader tied to it. Right then, um, filling a fixed build reel, a few key elements um, to get the best performance out of your reel and out of your fishing. Um, we've stripped the reel back, the same as the multiplier, it's going to take about 250 yards of line. Got the backing on that, don't want to be filling it up with loads and loads of line that's never going to see the light of day. And we've fastened the backing to the main line with a standard double grin or not. And obviously we're, we're loading the line with the label up um, and that will help prevent your line twist. Um, 
when it's you finally got it loaded. Battery, isn't it? Yeah, it is very, very important. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't want to be coming off clockwise. It must be coming off the spool anti-clockwise. Because if it doesn't come off in an anti-clockwise manner, um, you get create a lot of line twist. And as you're actually reeling in, you'll see your line twisting, um, and it'll bunch up on your spool. And it's also worth mentioning, Pete, with a fixed spool reel. Um, it's more importantly not to overfill a fixed spool reel. Very much than so. Than a multiplier, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You sit, you don't want it piling all over the beach as soon as you pick it up. Yeah, because what happens, the coils go loose on the spool and they just fall off on their own, don't they? That's it. Only catching a bit of wind, can't it? It winds up down the beach. Yeah, that's yeah. right. A proper nuisance. Okay, so that's the reel finished about now. So the key points are to remember label up. Um, keeping the tension on yourself as you're reeling it onto the reel and don't overfill the reel. Right. Get it nice and nice way. Oh, yep, oh just... you were lucky. Yeah. Well done, Joe. Very lucky. He said he had a slightly bigger dogfish and he was right. It's actually a full us. It was lucky the rotten bottom worked then, wasn't it? It was indeed. Look at that. What's he, about four pounds? About that, Joe. Yeah. Lovely looking fish. Bit of peel of crab. Yeah, looking for a rass, I was. <laughs> looking for a rass. Just shows you can never tell where you're going to catch, it. That's, that's why you're so good, Joe. And he caught it on the rotten bottom rig, which is pretty useful. Yeah. Bled's gone. What's the difference between this and the small bullass that uh, we caught a little bit earlier on? No, the dogfish we caught earlier on, which is a lesser spotted dogfish. This is a greater spotted dogfish. It, it grows up to nigh on 20 pounds, these can go. And really? A, and the normal dogfish can go about four pound maximum. It's about, what, about £4, I suppose? About £4 it would be, yeah, I would yeah, have thought. Lovely. Brilliant. Right, Joe, this is a product we're no strangers to. We've used for a long time with our snoods and rig bodies over the years. Yeah, that's right. It's um, Memorex. It's a memory-free hook line and trace body line, as you're saying. And when you tie a knot, you pull your knot tight and you don't get any kinks or nothing in your snood or your, your, tra your, your trace body where you connect your, your top link and your trace or your, your lead. But that's it's right. a very, very good product that we've been using for a long time. And the beauty of this... It comes in three different colours. This is the black, you've yeah. got the red in your hand, and we also do a clear. That's and right. You've had some experience recently with um, fishing a competition, I believe? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was getting tangled up quite a bit with, with the lad next to us uh, in, over in the Isle of Man, and um, having the red hook line on just helped so much, saved me so much time. The sort of rigs come up in such a ball and a tangle. Uh, and of course you want to get the fish back quite quickly and to get them measured and recorded and returned and the fact I had red on and not many people use it and I, I don't see why not you could see what fish it belongs to get them off and then get them back gave you time later in the day to sort your, your um, sort your rigs out yeah, so yeah right, yep. it's, got, it's got like a multitude of uses hasn't it really it has really it's a very uh, all round type line really isn't it very much so yeah, yeah. very much so just about an all round hook length incredibly popular um, and something we use on virtually all our general day to day fishing yeah the 75% of the fishing I would say this is the hook line and trace body line that you generally use yeah you know, it's, it's a very 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 good product very good product We've had a brilliant three days on three or four different venues trying out all of the new and existing Ultima products. And we were able to use a, a range of my rods. Our company revolves around three questions. What do you want to catch? Where do you want to fish? And how do you want to fish? If you use those three words, you can basically, one, choose a rod you want to use, and two, you can choose the lines you want to use. You will have heard us explaining, going through all of the Ultima products, explaining what you can use them for, the whys and wherefores, and obviously the best one for your quarry, your fish, the area that you're fishing. 
The other thing, obviously, with the lines is that you need to put them on a reel and then use them on a rod. As, as some of you might, might know, um, originally I was a custom rod builder, and after a number of years of building rods, I decided, nope, I'm now going to produce a brand of product, and that's exactly what I've done. So I've taken my knowledge and, dare I say, expertise into producing a range of products for everybody, regardless of uh, your angling ability. So we have rods that range from um, our six and bait range, which is really, really popular, uh, great price point. You'll have probably seen quite a few of the uh, few of the guys on the beach using the tournament match rod. That's a uh, that's our, seems to be our, our top of the range rod. Everyone loves it. Great bite detection and casts a lead a very, very long way. Um, if you're not into all of that and you fancy something a little bit easier to use but still does the distance, then the Clubman is the way forward. As you know, I'm a matchman and that's my that's my thing. I've done quite a lot of um, um, specimen fishing in the past, but uh, match fishing is what I enjoy doing the most. Um, and so on the rod side of things, that's where we're pretty well known. However, in the last couple of years, there's been a massive, massive rise in the, in the love of lure fishing and basically bass fishing in this country. So one of the reasons I brought this rod was so that we could actually go out and do a little bit of the plugging. And we were able to use the new braid and the power fluorocarbon leader. Any Fish Anywhere is a specialist sea angling company and that means all varying types of fishing that is done in the sea. So whether it's a bass rod, a lure rod, a rock rod, a, a tournament casting rod, we actually have to be able to provide all of those things and that's what we do first and foremost. With the vast amount of rigs that are actually available on the market and the ones that you want to tie, Thankfully, we were able to provide you with all of those. So we used all of our new terminal tackle and a few of our pre-tied rigs. Don't forget, three questions. What do you want to catch? Where do you want to fish? How do you want to fish? Have a look at our website, anyfishanywhere.com. So George, this is Ultima Power. Tell me about this. It's, it's a new line Ultima brought in um, early on this year. It's uh, a very strong, very high abrasion line. It's not strength, it's unbelievable. It's a really good line. You know, you get in rock marks where you lose a bit of gear, it won't let you down. Um, it's mid-range price as well, which helps a lot of people. So it's a good line. It's surprising how they've done it for that. For that no. money? Yeah, right, that, that is the thing. It's, it's, there's no compromises with it at all. And what sizes are they are they producing it in? They there? do a range from £2 up to £60. So there should actually be something there for everybody. It, yeah, so the lads who want to cast a long way can use a lighter line, knowing that it's going to be the strength there with it as well. So, yeah, good line. So as a retailer, George, you're well aware that there's many, many products available on the market. Where does power fit in for you? At, at the price range, probably at the top of the top of the market, it's an excellent line. It's user friendly. It's very strong. Stands head and shoulders above the rest. We hope that this film has given you an insight into the time and dedication that Ultima puts into developing and testing its lines. It is this commitment that has helped to make them recognised around the world as at the very forefront of line performance and technology. We also hope it has given you some tips on rigs, knots and other aspects of sea fishing that will be of benefit to you in the future. More in-depth information on all the subjects covered here is available on the Ultima website, ultimauk.com. Of particular use to all anglers are the easy to follow knot and rig tying sections, plus the weather and tide information, which is updated on a live basis for all venues around the UK and there is also a search facility to find your nearest Ultima stockist. You will have noticed that throughout the film, the guys have been wearing some of the items from the great new range of clothing from Ultima. These high quality items are now available for everyone to purchase directly from the merchandise store on the Ultima website, with special promotion offers to people who have watched this film. Just enter the promotion code STP0910 in the promotional code box 
and you will get special prices as well as bonus items. The Ultimate Team have enjoyed a superb few days fishing in various challenging conditions around North Wales. They caught plenty of fish, but more importantly, they used the time to test existing product to the limit and develop new lines for the company. One thing is for certain, Ultima makes some superb products and every one of the team has their own particular favourite. OK, my favourite Ultima product is actually a new product of theirs now, which is called Power Steel. I always was an, an F1 man, uh, Power Steel came out, didn't really think they could better it, but hey, very good product, thoroughly enjoy using it. One of my old favourites was Red Ice for rough ground fishing, fantastic. My favourite product, or the product I most enjoy using would probably be the lighter tapered leaders, um, coupled with four pound lines, light lines, um, give me maximum enjoyment out me fishing. The tiny little knots prevent weed log up on the beaches, it's, it's the bee's knees, it really is, and very, very strong and reliable. My favourite Ultima product, without doubt, is uh, the Black F1. Um, it's a fantastic line that you can spool it on your reel at home, um, but you don't even need to wet it to, to cast out when you first get to a venue. You can just take it out of the tackle box and you can cast it. You don't get no fluffing up with it at all. It's a beautiful, nice, supple line and it is very, very, very strong. And I always team that up with a Powerflex shock leader. And those would be my two favourite Ultima products. F1 for me does everything. I can go on a sandy beach, scrap a fish out, I could put a little reel on with F1 and whack it as far as I like. Even in rocks, I can get away with it, I know what it's going to do for me, it's not going to let me down, never going to let me down. Um, I've fished at world level where the line catches the fish as well as what I do. My favourite line I fish with is F1. I really like F1 for what it gives you distance wise, diameter wise, high abrasion resistance and all those things that it gives you. I have full confidence when I'm using that on my reels and that is my favourite product and my favourite line of the Ultima do. Hi, I'm Barney Wright, editor of Total Sea Fishing magazine and I'm delighted to be involved in the production and the promotion of this Ultima DVD. We at Total Sea Fishing have been great fans of Ultima product for many, many years, and I especially like the Ultima Power Steel line, which I use in many of my features. Total Sea Fishing is packed with live features from all around the country, both from the shore and boat, targeting just about every species there is to be caught. There's loads of tips and tricks from the trade, product features, honest reviews, competitions, news, casting results, and lots more. We also have a catch scene where you can enter your catch, and if we publish it, you win a prize. What a great way to get yourself in the magazine. So, there really is something for everyone in Total Sea Fishing magazine, so be sure to place your order now at your local newsagent. It comes out every second Friday of the month, or alternatively, you can take out a subscription by calling the number on screen right now. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoy the DVD because I know I did. It's absolutely brilliant viewing. There are plenty of programmes for the dedicated sea angler here at onlinefishing.tv. We've a host of great saltwater action from some of the world's finest sea fishing destinations. And with Sea Watch UK, we're bringing you the only new TV series aimed specifically at shore and boat anglers. If you're into sea fishing, then welcome to your world.